Well, we have some live breaking news, Nez Nation, about the Francis Scott Key Bridge, the I-695 in Baltimore. Apparently, this is just breaking. You won't see this anywhere else. The ship known as the Dali, or Dali, D-A-L-I, is missing. Um, officials, NTSB officials and investigators were able to recover and retrieve the black box from the container ship that collapsed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. And apparently there is two minutes missing from the black box right before impact. Let's check out this press conference. This is breaking right here. Information from the Dolly's Voyage data recorder, or what we call a VDR, was successfully recovered on the morning of the accident by the U.S. Coast Guard. It was provided to the NTSB upon our arrival. Approximately six hours of VDR data was provided to the NTSB. The recording included the time period from midnight to 6 a.m. By regulation, the VDR is required to record 30 days of history, and the NTSB is continuing to obtain more data. The times expressed below, as recorded by the VDR, and converted to local Eastern Daylight Time. All information is preliminary and subject to final validation. The VDR data is comprised of audio from the ship's bridge, as well as recordings from the ship's VHF or very high frequency radios. The quality of that audio varies widely because of the, um, the high levels of background noise and alarms. Additional analysis will be performed at the NTSB's lab to filter out the audio and improve its quality. Additionally, the VDR recorded limited sensor data. An example of that data recorded includes the ship's speed, engine RPM, ship's heading, and rudder angle, as well as some alarm information. NTSB engineers are working to identify and validate all of that data. The VDR recorded the ship's departure from Seagirt Marine Terminal at approximately 1239. It recorded the ship's transit outbound in the Fort McHenry Channel and the striking of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. By 107, the ship had entered the channel, and by 124, the ship was underway on a true heading of approximately 141 in the Fort McHenry Channel at a speed of overground of approximately 8 knots or 9.2 miles per hour. At 0, 0124 and 59 seconds, numerous audible alarms were recorded on the ship's audio, bridge audio. About the same time, VDR sensor data ceased recording. However, the VDR audio continued to record using the redundant power source. At around 0, 01, 26, and 2 seconds, the VDR resumed recording sensor data, and during this time there were steering commands and rudder orders recorded on the audio. At around 0, 01, 26, and 39 seconds, the ship's pilot made a general VHF radio call for tugs in the vicinity to assist. About this time, the Pilot Association dispatcher phoned the MDTA duty officer regarding the blackout. Around 0127 and 4 seconds, the pilot ordered the dally to drop the port anchor and additional, uh, ordered additional steering commands. Around 127 and 25 seconds, the pilot issued a radio call over the VHF radio reporting that the Dali had lost all power and was approaching the bridge. Around this time, ND, MDTA data shows the following also occurred. Their duty officer radioed two of their units that were already on scene due to construction on the bridge, one on each side of the bridge, and ordered them to close traffic on the bridge. All, line, all lanes were then shut down by MDTA. Around 0129, the ship's speed over ground was recorded at just under seven knots, or eight miles per hour. From this moment until approximately 129 and 33 seconds, the VDR audio recorded sounds consistent with the collision of the bridge. Additionally, around this time, MDTA dash cameras show the bridge lights extinguishing. Additional analysis of the VDR audio in comparison with other time sources will be needed to determine the exact time of contact between the dolly and the bridge. 
at, at 129 and 39 seconds, the pilot reported the bridge down over the VHF radio to the Coast Guard. The NTSB will later convene a group of technical experts to review the entire VDR recording and develop a detailed transcript of the dialogue and the, events, and the event alarms as recorded. A few areas of, uh, that I just want to clarify. Uh, the data that we received from the Coast Guard, which was they were able to obtain on the bridge uh, by downloading uh, the information from the VDR uh, from midnight to 6 a.m. That's a standard time frame. They provide that Im immediately so we can see that time, a time frame uh, around when the accident or incident occurred. Uh, knowing that we can go back and get the rest, uh, that there should be 30 days there. So this is the immediate information. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm confused. So, and by the way, that was Jennifer Homendi, the NTSB chair. Boy, she's had a busy few months, has she not? Um, if you don't recall, you know, we covered this story too. Um, the Alaskan Airlines uh, window popping, door popping off, the uh, Boeing uh, MAX, 737 MAX, uh, airplane and now the uh, Boeing CEO has just resigned. Boy, she's had a really, really busy 2024. She's been all over the TV. You mean to tell me, if I'm understanding this correctly, the black box is missing two minutes of recording right before the dolly crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge. That's what exactly what they just said. Uh, it's missing the recording and then it somehow interestingly strangely bizarrely it picked up recording again two minutes later is that normal what's uh, that seems really odd to me um and so I, I just wanted to share that with you because it's just it's you know my last video i wasn't trying to and if you missed the last video where i go through exactly everything and i the video etc etc i do a detailed animation no conspiracy here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not one of these guys. I'm not a conspiracy guy. I only allude to things that seem really interesting. The facts, evidence, substance that is given the intelligence that I do on my own uh, due diligence, qualitative and quantitative research that mainstream media doesn't talk to you about. And then I just simply share that, and I simply have my own take on it. I don't look. I'm the first person to admit I'm not an engineer. I'm not a, a, a container ship pilot. I don't know anything about this stuff. But when I see patterns and when I see interesting things arise and anomalies like this, um, it's worth talking about. And so here's some more research, just really quickly before you go. Here's some more research that I uncovered. So there's, you know, hair raising uh, uh, evidence that shows that uh, when that container ship, the Dolly, slammed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge, um, six people were presumed dead, took out one of the region's key infrastructure, right? But it wasn't the first time that an impact like that happened. Four decades earlier, another container ship that also lost power hit the same bridge and it stood strong. So let me repeat that. Four decades earlier, another container ship that also lost power hit the same exact bridge. That's interesting to me. That's fact. That's not conspiracy. Okay. The difference between the two accidents is an example of perhaps the dangers caused by what I want to allude to. And I want you guys to comment because we have a lot of brilliant engineers uh, people who uh, worked in maritime, people who have piloted actual container boats, people who work in this industry, the shipping industry. I want to hear from you. Massive increases in shipping vessel sizes in the intervening uh, decades. It's raising a lot of questions about, you know, whether changes in the bridge's design could have perhaps prevented this. That's, that's the only stuff I'm trying to allude to. Public records and interviews have shown that about a dozen bridge and shipping experts show that hundreds of bridges over U.S. waterways were built decades ago when container ships were a fraction of the size and weight they are today. Bridges of the era when the key bridge were built, was built weren't designed to protect against collisions with ships as big as the Dolly, the vessel that caused you know, the Baltimore catastrophe. 
Some experts said this week's disaster should inspire engineers to reevaluate whether America's aging infrastructure, remember, this is what apparently Tombstone Biden is all about, infrastructure, right? Um, can withstand impacts from gigantic ships that transit all of our waterways today. I mean, this is big. This is em emblematic of our entire infrastructure uh, uh, in the entire uh, U.S. Um, Rick Geddes, who's a professor and director of Cornell University's program of infrastructure policy, he says it's an absolute wake-up call. The people who were building the Francis Scott Prey Bridge never contemplated ships of this size. It wasn't their fault. They just didn't have a crystal ball. The previous Key Bridge accident had eerie similarities to what happened on Tuesday. In August of 1980, a Japanese container ship crossing the Baltimore Harbor lost propulsion about 600 yards from the Key Bridge after its electrical control board shorted out in the early morning hours. The ship then crashed into the bridge, colliding with one of its peers, okay, colliding with one of its peers, according to a National Research Council report on ship bridge collisions. The collision ripped out a 30-foot section of protective structure around the bridge's concrete piling, according to a 1981 article published in the Evening Sun newspaper that cited a Coast Guard report on the incident. But the piling itself was only chipped, not significantly damaged. The accident caused $500,000 in damage to the bridge and required $350,000 in ship repairs which is exactly the opposite of what it's going to cost and the timing of this repair. The ship is still uh, uh, in the harbor. It's going to take months and months. They're, they're already estimating millions, if not billions of dollars. It's one of the key infrastructure bridges in our nation, especially on the East Coast. Experts said it is highly unlikely the damage from the 1980 incident was related to its collapse. Inspections in recent years had found the bridge to be in fair condition, according to federal data, and Maryland Governor Westmore said Tuesday it was fully up to code. The biggest difference, okay, or one of the major differences, is the size of the ship. Data from the Maritime Tracking website, Mar Marine Traffic, suggests the ship that crashed into the bridge in 1980, then known as Blue Nagoya, was about a third of the length and a fraction of of the weight of the dolly. And that's not surprising given the explosion of this in the size of container ships in recent decades. Container ships in the 1970s when the Key Bridge was built could only typically carry 2,500 uh, 20-foot equivalent units of cargo, according to research uh, uh, maritime, uh, by Jean-Paul Rodrigue, a maritime business administrative professor at Texas A&M University, Galveston. Here you have a diagram of container ships that have grown since Baltimore's Key Bridge was built. So you see the 1970, 20 meters, 65 feet, uh, 10 containers uh, wide. Um, the use of container ships was widely adopted in the 70s and international shipping grew throughout the following decades. Obviously, our supply chain, our population, uh, the technological innovations, the need for goods and services, the increase in uh, demand, et cetera, et cetera. The more interconnected we became globally as opposed to locally. Um, when Francis Scott Key Bridge was built in 72, the largest ships, ships were cellular container ships. The first vessel specifically built for handling containers. So if you look there, 1970, um, these cellular ships were only 65 feet high and 215 or 700 feet long, whereas now you've got 1,200 feet long and 160 feet in height. So I think this is really interesting. I think this warrants a little closer review. Um, it's hard to tell what's going to happen now moving forward. Um, you know, uh, Biden, instead of going and visiting Maryland and visiting the site, he went in a fundraiser for Stephen Colbert and Obama. So I don't know. He claims he's all about building America and he claims he's all about infrastructure. And I'm going to pass this. I'm going to pass that. We need to make our country, you know, a uh, work again and big again. He's always claiming these things. But what are you doing? You're going to a fundraiser. This is a national tragedy. This is a catastrophe. People died. Um, the president of Mexico claimed this was, you know, uh, uh, another case of uh, mistreatment of migrants who were working on the bridge and got killed. You've got almost an international crisis here. And what does Biden do? He goes with Obama hand in hand, 
you know, eating lollipops and going to fundraisers with Stephen Colbert, his flashy celebrity uh, Hollywood crowd. Are your priorities straight, Mr. President? I mean, what's going on? Trump went to uh, that uh, poor, uh, uh, that young officer, Jonathan Diller's funeral today, and you're going to a fundraising, skipping and lollygagging? Going to a fundraiser when you had a national tragedy? Two national tragedies. That poor officer got shot serving New York. And this is your response? I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, is America behind on infrastructure? Is America, is the United States in dire need? Should we keep sending all of our taxpayer funding, all of our tax revenue overseas to fund proxy wars, to fund uh, Israel, to fund God knows what else out there? When we've got border crises, we've got national tragedies, we've got crime up, we've got a migrant crisis, immigration crisis, inflation crisis, we've got a tragedy at the Francis Scott Key Bridge. I don't know, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comments. As always, I try to answer all the comments personally myself. It's literally near impossible, so obviously members get first priority. Super Chat, Super Thanks get first priority. Consider becoming a member. It only costs you a cup of coffee uh, to support our channel. We're all about trying to get our country back and share with you through my own uh, due diligence and qualitative and quantitative research all of the things that we need to talk about that mainstream media won't touch, which mainstream media has essentially turned into state media. So they won't talk about any of these things because it doesn't serve their narrative. So I'd appreciate your support. Uh, as always, if you made it this far, become a Nez Nation Insider. It's our free newsletter. Just put in your best email and it's free. It's in the pinned comment. Uh, it's also in the show notes and in the description. Just click on the link, click on the option for free newsletter. And guess what? You're in. Give us your best email and you'll never miss out. Consider becoming a subscriber to our free email newsletter. You get all the latest breaking news, top stories, current events, live streams, videos that we produce right into your inbox. Check out these videos coming up right now. We just went live earlier today. Check that out uh, and check out this video down here. You'll love it. As always, Nez Nation, God bless you. God bless your families and God bless America. I'll see you soon.